Hey there, econ students and teachers. In this video, we're going to look at the factors that can shift a firm's short run costs of production. Now, short run costs of production are one of the more confusing concepts for economic students because all those lines have such weird shapes and it's hard to remember how they're related to one another. So make sure you're comfortable with how to illustrate and draw a firm's short run cost of productions before watching this video. There's a previous video that already teaches those relationships very clearly. Once you've reviewed that video, come back to this one and you'll learn all about the factors that can cause a firm's short run cost to either increase or decrease. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. In this video, we're going to talk about the factors that can shift a firm's short run costs of production. To guide us in this lesson, we're going to be looking at Bunny's Bakery. First, we're going to graph Bunny's short run costs of production. There are three important cost curves that you should always consider graphing when illustrating the costs and revenues of an individual firm in a competitive market, a monopoly market. It doesn't matter. Firms of all different types face the same short run cost of production. Let's label those now. I'm going to start with my marginal cost curve. You should have already learned that a firm's marginal cost curve slopes downwards and then upwards, reflecting the law of diminishing marginal returns. At higher levels of output, a firm experiences diminishing productivity from additional units of its variable resource that it employs. Therefore, the cost of additional units of output increases. The next line I'm going to draw is my average variable cost curve. This represents the per unit labor cost basically, and it slopes downward until it crosses marginal cost, and then it's pulled upwards due to the decreasing productivity of additional units of the variable resource. Finally, I'm going to draw my average total cost curve, which slopes downwards until it crosses marginal cost, and then slopes upwards again because the cost of additional units is rising and it is pulled closer and closer to a VC, the average variable cost, because you'll recall that at any given level of output, the distance between the ATC and the AFC represents the average fixed cost. In other words, the firm's total fixed cost divided by the quantity of output at a particular level of output. Clean that up. All right, so let's go through the different factors that can cause a shift in a firm's short run cost curves. We're gonna start with a change in variable costs. What are variable costs? These are the costs of raw materials and labor and any other costs that change with the level of output in the short run. If there is an increase in the raw material cost or an increase in the wage rate that a firm has to pay its workers, we're going to see a shift up in the firm's costs of production. So I'm going to draw all my shifts here in red. Let's assume that the wage rate that firms have to pay the workers increases. This is going to cause an increase in the cost of each additional unit of output, driving up the marginal cost to MC1. And it's going to drive up, of course, the variable cost, since the variable costs are what are changing here. So we'll see a shift up the variable cost curve, and it'll shift up the firm's total cost curves. So a change in a firm's variable costs will shift up all three cost curves. Average variable, average total, and marginal cost will all shift. Let's clean this up. Let's say that instead of variable cost changing, only fixed costs change. Let's review what fixed costs include. This includes things like rent on retail space. So my bakery, Bunny, has to pay rent for the space in which she operates her bakery. It could also include interest on bank loans. So assuming Bunny took out a loan to buy her ovens, and some of her raw materials to start her business, if the interest that she has to pay on those bank loans changes, then there will be no change in her variable costs. In other words, it won't cost her more or less to produce additional units or additional loaves of bread or additional muffins or whatever it is she's baking. Rather, it will only affect her fixed costs. Now, if there's a change in fixed costs, here's what's going to happen. We are not going to see any change in marginal cost or average variable cost. Let's assume that Bunny's rent decreases. She has to pay less rent each month. There will be a downward shift of her average total cost, as I am illustrating here. So we'll see ATC decrease, but there will be no change in her marginal cost or her average variable cost. So if there's a change in fixed cost, there will be a change in ATC, but no change in MC or AVC. All right, let's clean up the graph again, and let's move on to our next factor that can shift a firm's short run cost of production. Let's move on to productivity. Productivity is simply defined as the output per unit of input. 
An increase in productivity means that the bakery is getting more loaves of bread for every oven, for every worker, for every square foot of retail space, whatever it may be, the output of the bakery is increasing without having to acquire more inputs. If you can produce more output for every unit of input, that means your per unit costs are decreasing. So an increase in productivity decreases short run costs of production. Assume that the bakery hires more skilled employees. More skilled employees can produce more output for every unit of input, lowering the cost, the marginal cost, of additional loaves of bread, lowering the average variable cost of additional loaves of bread, we'll call that ABC1, and of course lowering the average total costs of additional units of bread. So increased productivity will shift all of the short run cost of production down and help a firm produce its output at a lower per unit cost. Okay, we're gonna clean up the graph one more time. And we're gonna talk about one more factor that can shift a firm's short run cost of production, and that's government intervention. We're talking about government intervention here. If a government chooses to tax the production of a good, it can levy two types of taxes. A per unit tax is going to increase all the short run costs of production. Or it could levy a what we call lump sum tax. A lump sum tax is basically a fee or a fine imposed on a producer. It is not paid for every unit of output produced. Rather, it is a lump sum. It is one fixed amount that the firm has to pay the government. The key word there is a fixed amount. This is going to shift the ATC, the average total cost, but not the marginal cost or the average variable cost. So let's show the effect of a per unit tax first. We're gonna see that for every unit of output produced, a tax has to be paid. This is gonna shift up all three curves. Marginal cost is gonna shift up, average variable cost is gonna shift up, and average total cost is gonna shift up. This is a per unit tax. A per unit tax will increase all the short run costs of production. What about a lump sum tax? I'm going to clean up the graph again. A lump sum tax will shift up the ATC. It'll raise the average price of output for the firm, but it will not affect the cost of additional units or the average variable cost. A lump sum tax is a one-time fixed amount paid to the government. All right, one more government intervention to discuss here. Subsidies. What effect will a subsidy have? A subsidy is a payment from the government to producers, so a subsidy will decrease all the short-run costs. Of course, that's referring to a per-unit subsidy. A subsidy for every unit of output will lower the marginal cost to MC1, will lower the AVC, the average variable cost to AVC1, and will lower the average total cost. All right, last thing we want to talk about is, we'll clean up the graph one more time, a lump sum subsidy. A lump sum subsidy is the reverse of a lump sum tax. It will only affect the average total cost. A lump sum subsidy is basically a one-time payment from the government to producers, which lowers their average total cost, but has no effect on the cost of additional units of output. It has no effect on the variable cost because it's not affecting raw material prices or labor prices. It's only a one-time payment to lower the fixed costs of the firm. So we've outlined all the factors that can affect a firm's short run cost of production. A change in variable costs like raw material prices for a bakery that might be flour or sugar, or labor prices that would be wages for the workers in the bakery. These will affect all the short run cost curves. A change in fixed costs will only affect the average total cost curve. Rent on retail space, interest on bank loans. A change in fixed cost shifts the ATC, but not the AVC or the MC. If a producer can get more output for every unit of input, it's going to see its short run costs decrease. Marginal cost, average variable cost, and average total cost will all decrease. If for some reason productivity decreases, we would expect to see average cost, marginal cost increase in the short run. Finally, government interventions. Taxes, whether they're per unit or lump sum, will shift either all three cost curves in the case of per unit or only the average total cost curve in the case of a lump sum tax. A per unit subsidy would shift all the cost curves down and make it cheaper for a firm to produce its output in the short run, whereas a lump sum subsidy would shift only the ATC down and help reduce the average total cost but not affect the cost of additional units or the average variable cost. Here we go. One step at a time, don't be living.